Let's invite everybody to come out in the uh, daddy room. Oh, dear, don't do it. Beauty folks, first of all, I want to uh, thank you all for taking time to come. Uh, we had a great weather day and throughout upstate New York. A couple of us just came back all we were down for the Regional Council Awards today. But this is the, the last uh, policy matters series that we have. Uh, a few thank yous before we start. Uh, welcome by two great colleagues I'll introduce momentarily. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about what's going on here. And I think we're all going to be pretty brief. We're all going to probably say the same things. Uh, but we would love to have your questions. We'd love to have you weigh in with questions. And this is a, a great free-for-all for us here, too. So we appreciate that. Some thank yous. First, to Genesee Valley Club for hosting us and having us tonight. You get a chance to men and women to work here. Uh, the management, they do a great job. and appreciate the, all they're doing tonight and making this special. This will not happen without sponsors. And, and we've had these series throughout the year. If some are here, I might go through those tonight. First, I'm going to recognize Kevin Hanna from at and I want to thank Kevin for all the spot. He's been with us all year. Thank you so much, Kevin. We have Chris Brewer from Charter Communications. Chris is over here as well. I want to thank Chris. Joe Rizzo is here from RGB. Most powerful man on RGB. Joe Rizzo, I want to thank him for coming. And his wife, Judy, is with him. I want to thank him for all the support they've given us. Uh, Delta Airlines is a big supporter. Penny, of course, cannot be here, but I want to thank Delta. So AT&T, Charter, RG, and Delta, all terrific sponsors of this series all year long. They really make this possible. I want to thank them. Uh, we have some board members here tonight. I want to thank uh, Dina Porterfield, who's here. Uh, Brad McRae, I think, is here as well. Chris Mueller. Uh, thank them for all their support. Uh, we just came back from all the regional council awards, and I'm going to have one of our speakers weigh in on that first. Uh, I wanna, uh, before I do that, I want to thank Chris Weist is here from our, our policy area. I want to thank Chris for all his work on policy matters, and, and Shan Ely with him, and all our team. We have our, our membership team. At, our event team that, that really welcomes everybody when they come in. A lot of our, our staff here, I thank them for all their hard work and really being here at all the events and making this possible. Uh, so, the title tonight is Region on the Rise, and I think there's a lot to be very, very proud of. We had a pretty good day today in all. We've had a pretty good few years with some of the investments uh, and, and projects that are happening here. But there really is a, a spirit of this, this place is moving. And, and for all those that, that talk about, uh, you know, the, maybe the, the negative things and things that don't work, listen, nothing's ever perfect. There's always areas to improve. There really is an awful lot going on in this region, thanks to an awful lot of people, and really across the state and across the upstate. Um, and I think part of it is just getting back to really you know, feeling a sense of spirit and, and pride about our region. I want to give Deb Stendardi a shout out because just, Deb is here and just made a comment to me before we started about bringing us back to that I'd rather be in Rochester song that most, most of us my age could probably sing that entire song. We'll do it, but we probably could. Uh, but that you go back to just some things that really just uh, really engineer a great sense of pride of who we are and what we have going here. And we're really going through a lot of transformations here. And we have uh, our first two speakers. We have two, I, I would say, great professionals. They're great colleagues. Matt Hurlbut and Vinny Esposito. Matt Hurlbut is the CEO of Greater Russia Enterprise. Been with him about 10 years. Vinny Esposito has had a long career here. Vinny is currently the regional director for Empire State Development. Uh, has done a tremendous job with the regional council and really a lot of other things that go on in this region. Works not only publicly but behind the scenes. I think Matt and Vinny have been two people that have been an absolute pleasure to work with. I don't think they get enough credit for what they do. Matt just recently took over GRE. He's been second in command for many years, uh, but a, a great professional. I want, one of the things him to talk about is the Amazon proposal we put forth because he was the quarterback of that proposal for our region, did a great job. And, and again, Matt will go first, and Vinny, we're going to talk about maybe five to six minutes each. Nobody wants to give a long speech. As I said, we'll probably all talk about a lot of the same things, but uh, for both these gentlemen, a pleasure to work with. Uh, have done great things for this region, great things for our businesses. So please, first welcome Matt Herbert, and then follow after Matt with Vinny Esposito, then I'll back clean up, and then we have questions. So Matt, please. It's very kind. Uh, so I have copies of the Amazon proposal for all of you. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and now I just broke the microphone. Um, so, <laughs> so first of all, yeah, we, uh, it's interesting, uh, if you haven't heard or followed the Amazon uh, proposal, uh, we did work with our colleagues from uh, the Buffalo area and Best Buffalo Niagara, and certainly with the Chamber and Vinnie and Empire State Development, who gave us some great support 
And uh, I, I would just say this, is that um, I would be very positive about what this region has to offer. It, it's, it's interesting to note that we were launching uh, uh, an IT strengths uh, piece as, and going out um, on the internet marketing as, as this came about. And we certainly uh, leverage this opportunity and certainly the Moody's uh, analytics report. And I would encourage everybody as we talk about not just Amazon, but technology and the opportunities in this region and certainly the news today with RIT, uh, remember how good we are in, in the human capital, the cost of doing business, uh, the quality of life, and yes, even transportation. And uh, we may get a dusting of snow from time to time but it's just fresh water falling from the sky. And our food and beverage companies need that, our advanced manufacturing companies need that. And, and I'm not really joking about that because we have another large project that Vinny and I have been working on, and I can only give you a code name, it's Project Eagle, yes, another Eagle project. Uh, $3 billion investment, 5,600 jobs. We are a finalist, and one of the reasons, frankly, is water. Um, so uh, we have the capital, uh, human capital assets that companies like Amazon and others need whether it be advanced manufacturers, uh, solar research companies, energy research companies, information technology. Our phone is ringing. Um, uh, we are working more projects now uh, than I think I've seen since I've been at GRE. Uh, and I also want to say, too, that uh, to Bob's point, the collaboration in the region is, is, is uh, a key part of that. The ability to pick up a phone and uh, get to any of you in this room to get a, whether it's uh, having an interview on talent acquisition, access to uh, supply chain or other research and development assets to support a company that's growing here, uh, reviewing, doing their analytic process is very, very important. And uh, it's really kudos to the folks that are here and, and to you in the room, the fact that you support us all. So I would just leave with uh, 2018 is going to be a good year. I envision some, uh, I, I can't give you a crystal ball, but I do envision that we're going to be busy. We're going to see some very good announcements, as we've seen already this year. And again, it's a lot of technology and great opportunities uh, for our region. So. Good evening. Please forgive my voice. I've had a cold that I'm unable to kick, but I'm uh, happy to be here. I'd like to thank Bob for the invitation and all of you for everything you do for our business community and for our region. It's a real pleasure to have the job that I have. I'm, the Regional Director of Empire State Development, which is the state's economic development agency, so I work for the state, for Governor Cuomo, which, which Bob alluded to, but it also means I'm the Executive Director of the Finger Lakes Regional Economic Development Council, which many of you in this room participate and are a part of, and which Bob Duffy is the brand, not, not brand new anymore, but a few months ago agreed to step up as the new co-chair. So I'd like to thank Bob for the invitation and for his service to this community, especially in the new role as Regional Economic Development Council co-chair. Bob also alluded to the fact that we did just return from Albany, as I noted some other people that I see in this room, um, for the annual Regional Economic Development Council award ceremony that the governor hosts in Albany. It's a special day. It's the culmination of a lot of hard work that the regional council, everyone from the project sponsors to the volunteers on the work teams to the council members, you know, spend a whole year putting together this region's annual report and priority projects, and this is when we find out how we did it. Um, and we did very well. We weren't a regional top performer as we have been for the previous six years. Um, but we had today announced 110 projects and $63.9 million of awards coming back to our region thanks to the work of the Regional Economic Development Council. It was a successful day, but I, I, think, I think that number is actually wrong because as I see it, it's actually $113.9 million thanks to the commitment that Austin McCord and Dado made to RIT today. How about that news? Congratulations to RIT and Daddy. I know that's something I'm very proud to hear. Dado's a company that we've supported in New York State that has done great things to invest and attract people into our downtown. And that's really what this is about. That's what we do on a daily basis. It's what we do together. I'm really proud to work with Bob and Matt as a, as a team and organizations that work very well together. Not only do we have great opportunities that Matt started talking about, everything from HQ2 and Amazon uh, to some potential big projects like Project Eagle and, and the many others, but 2018 is also going to be a year of action and implementation on things we have collectively worked on for the last couple of years. Those of you who have been involved with the Council at all know the term Finger Lakes Forward. I probably wear a pin that has that logo on it, and we're going to be distributing more in the near future with the Regional Council next year. But that is our mantra. It's our strategic plan to identify where we believe our opportunities lie and where the state should be investing to help. And a lot of those things that we have been doing since we won the $500 million upstate revitalization initiative are starting to come to fruition this year. 
I mentioned Datto. They're expanding into the Metropolitan. They're moving in in just a couple weeks to, I think it's four to six floors, depending on how fast they grow and how fast they can build those out. The long-anticipated and awaited AIM Photonics Testing Assembly and Packaging Facility at Eastman Business Park is open. Its offices, the labs, and the clean room will be open in 2018. The also long-awaited and my very favorite excited project about is, I'm looking at Jim Sinal, High Tech Roster is going to be moving into their brand new home downtown in the Sibley Building with the Finger Lakes Business Accelerator and 10 new tenants as part of the Illuminate New York Business Competition. So congratulations to you, Jim. Please give a round of applause. And those are just some of the very high priority projects that the council has identified in the past several years, part of that Finger Lakes Forward plan, that are now coming home and starting to pay dividends to our community. And you see some that were announced today, companies like CGI that are investing downtown, um, a whole bunch of potential projects with the Strong Museum and Parcel 5 and the Convention Center that can drastically transform the downtown experience for people in a way that is necessary as we see more people moving downtown and more companies moving downtown. We need to make sure that all the amenities that make Rochester the world-class city that it is continue to get investment and the state's a partner in all those things. And then in the just job creation sector, we also see things coming online this year like American Packaging Corporation, which is something that Matt and Bob and our teams, we worked very hard together with that company to ensure that they, a homegrown company, are going to grow here even further to the tune of almost 300 new jobs coming online again in just a couple of weeks, their facilities opening up out in Chi Life. So there's a lot of momentum. That's what we're trying to build. That's what the governor's trying to build by identifying strategic investments in partnership with the local community and the stakeholders on the regional council, where the state can be that investment support and be that um, financial sort of benefit and boost that we know we need in upstate as we continue the evolution and the transformation of our economy into the next generation of innovation and technology. And it's very exciting to work on. I think you'll get that from us if you don't already know us. But it's in large part thanks to the commitments people like you are already making in this community. So thank you very much. I'm excited and look forward to answering your questions. I appreciate the invitation to be here and happy holidays. Thank you, really both Vinny and Matt. And a couple things I'd like to maybe bring to a close before the questions for this. I think they, they both hit on the projects. There are so many projects going on right now. now there was at least one recipient in the room of the projects today. A lot of money coming in, a lot of opportunities. And, and when you really get a chance to walk around, sometimes you hear people talk about gloom and doom. And I think I see a little different part of this. Uh, we get to go out to companies, many companies right in this room, and have such a great appreciation for what you do, the investments that have been made, uh, the jobs that you are growing, the things that you are doing, our universities, RIT, U of R, I know our Robert Swesley presence here, all the way, 19 colleges, universities, and Crest, we could not be here tonight, but wanted to be here, uh, is leading the way with, with workforce development at a community college level. Uh, but the young people we are bringing in, uh, Dado is a great example, Austin McCord, a, a very young CEO of RIT, started a business in his parents' garage in Connecticut, gets $50 million today, and has hundreds of employees working in Rochester. And that's, to me, that's a snapshot of where we are going. And I'm blown away by what I see here. And sometimes it's a matter of we have to almost change the channel because, you know, I think going back to what I mentioned before about Deb's comment about I'd rather be in Rochester, I think we have to take a step back and really kind of reinvigorate the pride here. And this year we took a look back at George Eastman. We're trying to uh, plan something for next year for George Eastman's birthday. But we look at what we have and what is growing. And the people in this room, the money you've invested in, in your businesses and you're, you're creating jobs right now, and you look at the colleagues around this region, there's an awful lot going on. And Vinny and I have both worked for the state. Vinny is still there. Uh, the state takes a lot of criticism at times. Uh, but I would say this. The situation did not happen overnight. Decades and decades and decades it took us this point. But this administration has done a lot. There's a lot of things changing, and I have to say this about the governor. Uh, I don't, I've never seen anybody invest more in upstate in that role than he has. And I've been in, in the mayor's position, I've been there, I've been with previous governors, like them all, but nobody made the commitment up here. And, and, and it's not a mirage, it is real money. I mean, look at what's happening in Buffalo. Buffalo is doing great things. Buffalo has really been a transformation there. And I'm seeing the same thing here. Uh, Vinny mentioned photonics. We have $106 million of equipment uh, going to the building on Lake Avenue. Uh, that'll be up and running next year, opening for probably tours early part of 2018. But you know, in terms of jobs, maybe 50, 80 people working in that facility. But the, the key is to draw more people in, more researchers, more money, more investment. And what AIM Photonics is really about is creating this sustainable ecosystem for photonics here. 
And thanks to you know U of R, RIT, and our higher education community, we are a, we're a thriving place for optics, photonics, and imaging right here now. Uh, and our laser institute, I saw recently that uh, China has taken over maybe a world lead in lasers. U of R, uh, their laser history and institute, I think is world class. I think we have the capacity to do so much here. And a lot of it is, I think, creating much more camaraderie, much more alignment, much more teamwork here, and, and really trying to, to draw more investment, more excitement. Uh, I know uh, Vinny mentioned Jim Snell. High Tech Rochester is, is a great place downtown. I've been there with their, their new space. They are bringing new companies together. Uh, probably a lot more Austin Accords are in that group that will go out and create these jobs. And, and the whole economy is changing. And some of the things that maybe we were known for in the past uh, might kind of go off to the wayside. But in terms of optics, photonics, imaging, agriculture, next generation, and advanced manufacturing, we have so many strengths here. And I just kind of close by saying, I go to companies probably every week. Kevin Downey was here, Bill Anderson from our membership team. We go out and visit members all the time. I'm born and raised here. I've spent my whole life here. I walk into places I did not really know what they did. I, I heard the name before, and when, I, when you walk in and see what they do, you know, we had one company making components for rocket ships. So a lot of companies from aerospace to the military to you know, just hosts of, of really global markets they have. Uh, are really being done right here in Rochester. And we have, there's so much to be, that we should be proud of. You know, the Amazon proposal, both Matt and Vinny were involved in that state, was a big uh, proponent, supporter of that. We look at Amazon, and people laugh when Moody's rate is number four. Who knows what Amazon will do? We look at the package that was put together for the Amazon proposal. You know, while it's maybe highly secret, it makes me very, very proud when you look at what we have here. Our affordability, our technology, our talent, uh, all the things that we sometimes take for granted are here. And I think we, we really have a, a great spot, a great location, and a great future ahead. And I think if we think about that and look for ways to be positive, look for ways that we can align and work together, look for ways, and my last point, is that we can connect with each other. Uh, we have companies here that go outside the region for supply, uh, suppliers, supply chains, uh, other parts of their business, but maybe a neighbor down the road could do it better, faster, and cheaper. And in a lot of ways, we really don't know what each other does. And I think we have to tell our own story more effectively here and try and connect businesses. And I just want to close by saying, for the business leaders here, I want to close by saying thank you. Thank you for supporting us and for supporting all of us. But for the money you've invested in your businesses, you probably have put your kids' college savings, your life savings at risk. You've done this for years and years. Uh, and you have really you've sacrificed. You've created jobs. Uh, you've really created a much more of this economic vitality that we have. And it would not happen without people in this room and many others around here. And from our big companies down to our small, everybody plays a major role in this, this economic turnaround. And the last thing with teamwork, I, I think Matt said it, I feel the teamwork we have is seamless. I really do. I think people work so well together. Now, Don Jeffries is in the back. I think I saw him. Uh, a big partner for us, uh, tourism. Tourism creates jobs. Tourism creates economic opportunity. Our wineries, our breweries, uh, some of the things we kind of think are, are more recreational, they create jobs and economic vitality here. And everybody kind of plays a role. So I hope you feel the same enthusiasm we do. It's not phony. It's not put on. I think we have to just look for ways to get better and better at what we do. Acknowledge our weaknesses, but most of all, acknowledge our strengths. And, and really take advantage of what we have. Our strengths far outweigh our weaknesses in this region. I think we get better and better all the time. So we're going to stop and maybe... Take questions. We're not scripted. You can ask us anything, and you'll probably get that answer back. But we'd love to open it up to, to anybody here to ask any you'd like. I think you should ask Vinny and Matt questions first. So I'll, <laughs> I'll play Vander White with the microphone here. So, questions? Let's go ahead and have a seat. Questions? All right. Um, in addition to being a great day for RIT, this was a pretty good day for arts and culture in this community. Maybe Vinny can uh, let the room know how we did with the uh, announcements today. Sure. A lot of attention gets paid in the media to who wins the regional competition the governor sets up, which is important because it means more resources for the regions that win. But what's more important are what are the individual projects that get funded. And to Norm's point, um, the Little received over $500,000 from the New York State Council on the Arts, the Rochester Museum and Science Center over a million, the George Eastman House over a million. So there were several key institutions in Rochester that did very well today at helping to move their initiatives and their missions forward. Um, and that's the type of thing you really need to look into. I know I see 
Perfect Granola was an award recipient today. Junior Achievement, I know, is here, was an award recipient today. These are some really important projects that cumulatively, not just in the arts, but in all of our strategic sectors, are what make the difference as we're trying to really combat decades of economic decline in upstate and really make this region move forward and build on that momentum I was referring to. Yeah, thank the two of you and three of you for all you did for this. This was a great day. Thank you. Questions? Yes. So, um, we, you know, what, one of the things we want to do at RIT is, you know, create more data of success stories. Um, and, Matt, with regard to the Amazon proposal, you know, we had a great quote from an RIT alum who works at Amazon and, you know, had a terrific quote about how he loved, you know, when he was in this area. And, I, you know, I think it was a really strong point to make. So, how can we leverage more of that to help you do what you need to do? The uh, first of all, thank you. That was a great quote, and there's a lot of um, a lot of our current company success, uh, the talent that we have, uh, the access to our colleges, universities, the research that you're doing, your alumni stories and technology was woven into that proposal. And I I can say that most of that will be used again, and, and I can state that it's already been used again. Um, we're talking to other technology companies. I'd like to think some of it's the publicity that we got through the Amazon process. Um, I, I think we picked up at least three new information technology related projects uh, since that proposal announcement was made. We have had uh, three site visits this week in the region. We have two next week and for December in Rochester. That is atypical, I can say. Um, we are very busy and we have been through that period when, uh, since uh, September when the Amazon project was announced, uh, which is what I'm talking about. And that's across the board, food and beverage, large companies, small companies. Uh, we love those big company projects, but uh, we are leveraging that now. And what's different about Amazon, and I think people uh, need to understand, typically it's a code name project. We work in code names, uh, non-disclosure agreements. I actually, we are under a non-disclosure agreement with Amazon right now. Um, and most of this is not seen. Um, uh, I see my friend Joe Rizzo, I call him all the time for cheap power, um, and I want it yesterday. But it, it is the ability to replicate that, and we do plan to do that, and frankly, it's a great selling point for the region. The Moody's ranking is, is key, but also the information and uh, certainly the testimonies, to testimonials that validate what we promote. I just say, is it something probably we, we know and we don't necessarily internalize, but in general, those quotes aren't just quotes to help a proposal. They are speak to a larger mindset of how Rochester looks at itself and promotes itself. We've been known for a long time to be our own toughest critics. We know how great our quality of life is here, but we maybe harp a little too much on the negatives that we've seen and lived through, and honestly lived through well. But we're entering a new phase, a new generation is really taking hold in Rochester and bringing a whole new sense of vitality. And anything you can do to be an advocate it makes a difference. It's not just an intangible that seemingly has no benefit. It really matters when there is a power in the business community in a place like Rochester and allows us in other projects to get the attention of other projects that might not otherwise look here because they have bought into that perception that has been built up over decades of a Rochester that just isn't true. So I would say that speaks to the larger issue of helping to get on the train of making Rochester great again. One addition to technology, and I think we could get more people investing here and companies coming with, with really the core of the technology of a, a Silicon Valley. We'll keep these young men and women from our universities here. There's no doubt they go to Google, they, they travel, they get both coasts. And one thing, we, I go back to the, the Amazon proposal. What we can offer these young men and women is to be able to buy a home here at probably one quarter of the price of Silicon Valley, or maybe in New York City or Connecticut or anywhere on the east or west coast. Uh, and the, the talent here is, is immeasurable. One of the things I've noticed we have our some large technology companies, but we have a technology sector here that is powerful. Some great CEOs of like growing companies. I know we have one company down uh, in Village Gate that, that services Amazon Cloud, uh, their web services. And so we are connected everywhere, and they use the talent coming out of our local colleges and universities. And Danny Wegman has often said this and, and is working toward it, creating much more of a tech hub here. And I think we have to really just appreciate what we have here and look for ways to, to keep that talent here uh, and make it more affordable for them because they, these kids are just scary smart to come out of these universities every year. I think that's going to be one of our strengths for the future. Yeah. Can't ask a no, question already. Two questions. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say also, you know, I, I think that the other strength that we have in this region with the higher education sector in particular is that 
the I know President Porterfield is here. I mean, the colleges and universities work very well together and collaborate together. And I don't think that happens everywhere else. And, and I think that that is also, and so I think, you know, maybe when the site selectors are here, which I know I've been invited to some of the meetings, but I think broadening that to include all of the presidents and, and you know, all of the institutions would be very valuable. Great point. President Porterfield, she's here somewhere. Right there. Yep. Um, Great President Robert Swesson, but her really career passion is NASCAR driving. I was, was in an event with her last year in a local NASCAR place, and uh, she actually killed everybody except for the NASCAR driver in competition. So, but again, so the, the strength that we have, as Deb said, our higher education leaders are terrific and do work very, very well together. Questions? So we've talked about the strengths of our, our higher ed institutions and really one of our, our pillars for, for our future talent. But we also have challenges. We also hear from companies that, that aren't finding necessarily the, the talent or the workforce they need. What are your thoughts on what we're going to have to do to be competitive on that to attract the companies we want? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I market talent, smart people, and smart businesses at low rates. Um, but uh, I think you, you've seen, and we've had some of these discussions of certainly as we talk about supporting our existing companies. Uh, I'll go back to a story OFD Foods who announced and is building a facility, a new facility here in uh, Henrietta. One of the key reasons they came here is because of connection to RIT, as well as the Mechatronics program and MCC. And one of the things that we have talked about uh, leveraging and promoting is that program, the technician. Uh, level jobs in this community, whether it's optics, photonics, and imaging, advanced manufacturing, um, even in HVAC and other fields is critical, and uh, we need more people taking those classes. Yeah, you're right to raise it. It should have come up before. I don't know that there's a, a bigger challenge we face as a community, as a regional economy anyway, and that is not only developing the workers needed for the high-tech jobs of the future that we're trying to create in places like AIM Photonics um, that don't even exist yet, uh, but also replacing the workforce that is continuing to retire in larger numbers every day in jobs that have been around forever and that they have incredible institutional experience in. But also the greatest challenge we face is ensuring that all members of our community have the skills to participate in the next generation's economy. Um, and that's why we do spend so much time through the Regional Council participating in things like the Anti-Poverty Initiative and the various community partners who are working to try to ensure that not only people have skills, but they have the sort of network of supports needed to be able to get a job and keep a job and thrive in that job. That is incredibly difficult work. Um, there are lots of different ways in which we as a region and as a system fall down on it, but it's one that I know is at the top of our agenda in terms of a community and in terms of economic developers in a way that it hasn't been before. I mean, I think it's noteworthy, and maybe you've heard me say this, in economic development, we typically have three primary goals, to create jobs, to increase private investment, and to increase wealth. Well, the Regional Council, when they submitted their Finger Lakes Forward plan for that upstream revitalization initiative, identified a fourth primary goal to reduce poverty. Just elevating it to that level of importance and to that level of consideration in all of the investment decisions we make with state dollars has started to make a difference in terms of how the business community and how the economic development community is participating in that conversation. It's incredibly important. We have incredibly good partners that are all working really well on this, not any more than someplace like Monroe Community College. Um, but we need to continue to bring those partners together so that they're working collaboratively and we're being more successful on the outcome end because too many people are falling through the cracks, if you want to say it that way, and not participating in the economy. And that is probably our biggest challenge. Even though we're trying to reverse manufacturing declines, the actual challenge is getting people to have the skills to be able to participate in jobs that already exist. Our economy would grow drastically if we could solve that problem in a better way than we're already doing. I would just add, uh, I think the state has to play a major role in this looking at state education. I think we have to go back and rethink our education system for children. I was at a manufacturing uh, event last summer at FLCC, and a manufacturing owner said we should start in fourth grade, which I, that took me by surprise, but when you think about it, we should have much more age-appropriate opportunities for kids to learn how to work. Um, and I've been at a number of companies who are losing skilled trades, you know, and when you look at high school career guidance counselors and parents, often looked down on for their uh, sons and daughters to go off and, and do something other than going off to college. 
There are so many professions that will make a great living. Uh, and today's manufacturing environment is not made where I grew up where you put a screw in a camera codec. It is high tech, it is all, it's robotics, uh, it is all software development, computerized. It's a very different uh, vibe and environment today. I think we can do a much better job marketing that. I just want to ask the business owners here. Adrian Hale is here for our team. He's working with the city school district uh, on, on internship programs. And Vinny mentioned poverty. And I, it's hard to turn back some of the, the numbers that we've seen, which really have, have not happened overnight. It's decades and decades and sometimes educational failures, other issues that popped up over the years. But maybe if, if, as, a, as a business community, and we have probably 33,000 our MSA, but if we get every business to think of Taking one 11th or 12th grader uh, that is, you can say, say city schools, districts, but there's districts outside the region that are affected by poverty. But say take an 11th or 12th grader uh, and through internships, co-ops, start offering opportunities, maybe through districts for kids with jobs. And I think a lot of it is giving these young men and women an experience to come in. They develop relationships. They develop work skills. They develop a little better knowledge of what's out there. They can make better career decisions. And a lot of these kids can maybe if they go to college or choose not to, might end up not having a college debt and have a job. Uh, I've had employers tell me, we have a staff in business in the chamber, uh, I don't care about education, I don't care about degrees, just send me somebody who will come to work, come every day, come ready to work, get along with people and want to learn, and I'll hire them. And I think a lot of it is maybe our gen generational, we're not reinforcing some of those work skills and work habits. And these kids today, I think, are smarter and, and f they think faster, amazing, talented young people today in this world. But I think we're missing an opportunity if we can't really take a step back and reconfigure our education system to meet those needs as well. And not just higher ed is doing a great job. I think we're going to talk about elementary and secondary ed is with challenges. I'm Diana Loria from Junior Achievement, and we are thrilled to be uh, awarded a grant today for our Discovery Center. And what Junior Achievement does, many of you may or may not know, we teach financial literacy, workforce development, and entrepreneurship. And we are building a Discovery Center at Eastman Business Park. And this is um, a, a simulation economy. Our st the students, fifth grade for BizTown, seventh through 11th for Finance Park, actually go through 13 lessons in the school. And then they come to the Discovery Center and they actually see what they have learned. So there are storefronts, and these are businesses, and what we're hoping to do, particularly in the park, is highlight some businesses that we can say, okay, see this job? That building over there is where you're gonna work. So we're, we're offering a solution, I think, to generational poverty, as well as just inspiring young people that workforce development is a good thing. Thank you very much. Deserves a round of applause. And, and I'll follow up with saying that's exactly the type of partner and project and organization in this community that has now an economic development entity we're investing in. There are others in this year's awards alone. Teen Empowerment is expanding their youth uh, employment opportunities. Uh, Rochester Rehab, another outstanding community partner to help train people, receive funding in this year's CFA. That's how we're starting to think about this differently. It's not just about photonics that you hear so much about uh, or some of the other projects that are obviously important to grow the high-tech industries and provide those really high-end, high-quality, high-paying job opportunities. Um, but we need to make sure we're thinking of the whole continuum. So thank you for that project and uh, for those sorts of efforts that a lot of you are involved in. Any final questions? I want to take away from the part. Yes? Is any truth to the IKEA rumors? <laughs> Is that project I? <laughs> Okay. I'll say, for the most part, the state does not get involved in retail projects. I know you're sort of asking facetiously and rhetorically. So I have no knowledge of it, which is exactly what I told the newspaper when they called the news. <laughs> Next question. And, and to go back to Matt's point, uh, you know, have an appreciation, uh, GRE and the state, not our state development. You know, one thing I, I learned with the state, we're in competition every day. People are in our backyards every day trying to take our companies out, and we do the same thing. And so it's intense competition. If word gets out or leaks out, people will walk away from a deal. Uh, they want to do all their, their uh, due diligence before quietly and really uh, do it confidentially. So people just can't say anything. And the Amazon proposal, as good as it is, nobody can really see it. And it'll be probably kept under the lock and key to perpetuity. 
Uh, but that's the way the business works. And, and certainly we appreciate that. We don't want to lose a job, but um, I know that I looked at Costco came here uh, back a few years ago, and they did a pretty good job of looking at the retail opportunities. And I, so these companies do their work, and you, know, you don't know anything about it, but we'll see what happens. I think it's our last question. Listen, I, I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank uh, both Matt and Vinny. We have a little prize for them. It's under the lobby on it, so. Uh, <laughs> It's so nice, nice having uh, our board chair be Rob Sands from Constellation Brands. It's a great Constellation Brands uh, here. But just appreciate really uh, Matt and Vinny for coming today. Long day, uh, but for all they do for us. And, and these are our two just constant great professionals. I want to thank uh, again Chris and our, our chamber team for all the work on this, and, and also the, the club Valley Club for hosting us. Everybody here, I just want to thank you for your support of us, our sponsors, our members, and just wish you a, a very happy. A healthy, prosperous uh, holiday season, New Year, whether you're celebrating Hanukkah or Christmas or wherever you are celebrating. I hope you and your families have really a, a great holiday season. Looking forward to really a great 2018. So thanks for coming. Hope you have a chance to mingle here. Have a great night. Thank you.